everybody, I am Jarrett Ross, the Genie Vlogger, and on today's tutorial, I will be discussing how to upload your DNA to GEDmatch and how to opt in your kits while uploading or if they are already uploaded. Now here we're starting out at the home page for GEDmatch, and if you scroll down over to the right, this is where you're going to find upload your DNA files. You can either do a generic upload with the 23andMe, Family Tree DNA, or Ancestry DNA uh, kits, or if you have one of the newer Family Tree DNA kits, you may want to try their new upload if generic upload fails, uh, because with the newer Family Tree DNA kits, you may find that it fails due to the difference between the chips that they have used and are using now. So when we go into generic uploads, this is the screen you'll get. It'll automatically put the email that you've created this account under as the email associated with the kit. Here you want to put the name of the donor. They do ask that you put the real name of the person. Technically, you don't have to, obviously, but they give you a alias option uh, right below that if you do want to have that name displayed differently. So for me, my name is Jarrett Ross, but maybe I wanted to display it as JR. So if I display it as JR, if I come up as a match, that's how it's going to show. So then everything else is pretty straightforward. Sex of donor, male. Uh, if you know the mitochondrial haplogroup, you can put that there. If you know the Y haplogroup, you can put that there. This is just to help you out in terms of matching. So if somebody else is an autosomal match, and then you notice that you have the same mitochondrial haplogroup or the same Y haplogroup, might give you a hint as to how you're related to them. Then we have the name of the testing company or if it's another source. So you can actually see all of the different companies where they are accepting the DNA kits from. So all of these companies create raw data files that can be uploaded to GEDmatch. And there are other sources who can do these types of tests. So if you get a test from some company that's not in this list, you can just list them here. Now, here in this section, this is where you're going to indicate whose DNA this is and if you have the approval to upload it. Uh, most likely, most everyone will either be choosing their own DNA or the DNA of someone who they're a legal guardian of or someone who's granted them authorization to upload to GEDmatch. There is also the option some people may have kits from, you know, taken years ago where the person has since been deceased. So you can select that. Now the rest of the options are most likely going to be things that are not used by most people. These have to deal with the law enforcement kits. These have to deal with artificial kits. And then down here at the bottom are none of the above, assuming that none of these apply to you. And in that case, your upload is just not going to be accepted. So there's no point in doing this. Now scrolling down here to the bottom, we have the opt-in section. So this is going to be where you choose if you want to opt your kit in to be used by law enforcement who have kits on this database. So if you select opt-in, that means that your DNA will be searchable by anybody, including people who are researching kits associated with law enforcement cases. Now, if you don't want to opt-in, you can then choose opt-out. And if you choose opt out, what this means is, is that anybody who uploads a law enforcement kit will not have access to see your results if you're a genetic match to the kit that they've uploaded. But it still allows you to be a result for non-law enforcement kits. So anybody who's just researching their genealogy and they've uploaded their own DNA or their parents' DNA or their children's DNA or what have you, they'll still be able to see you if you're a genetic match. Now the third option here is research. A research kit is one where you want to be able to see who the genetic matches to this kit are, but you don't want any of those matches to see this kit. Now the last one is private. 
And for private, this one is for those who want to upload to GEDmatch specifically to use the tools that don't have anything to do with matching. So that could include the admixture ethnicity tools, or that could be some completely different tool. But this allows you to get your kit onto the GEDmatch database, but not to be searchable by anybody. So now we get to the part where you actually upload the data. So you're gonna choose your file and you're going to have a couple of different files that you can upload. The most common one that you'll see is either a .csv file, a .zip file, or sometimes you may actually get the .txt, the .txt file. Any of those really should work. If for whatever reason the DNA doesn't work, it will tell you in the next screen. So here we're going to choose this one and then we're going to just upload. And now this page is coming up and this is going through everything. Now there are certain things which may not come in correctly and you'll get these little warnings. That's not uncommon. The main thing you want is to come down here and to be assigned a kit number. If you are assigned a kit number, that means that they have been able to read enough data that they are able to put it into the database. So here we get the number for the DNA kit. They say to write this number down, but in all honesty, when you click here to go home, you will scroll down and notice, hey, there's that number. Now this is where you have your different kits. So you have your kit has not yet been tokenized, which is what I have, which basically just means it is still uploading. It takes a couple of days for it to fully tokenize. So it's best to just wait until it's been completely processed. And once that happens, you will see that green check mark right there. Now, let's say you've already uploaded your DNA to GEDmatch and now you want to opt in. To do that, all you have to do is go down to this little pencil. Now, you'll also notice over to the left, which isn't here yet because the kit has not fully processed, you'll notice a little symbol that says police and it will either be X'd out or it won't have an X over it. If it's X'd out, that means you are not opted in. That means you're opted out, and you can click it to then opt in. Or you can click this pencil. It's going to take you to the preferences pages. And here on your preference page, this is where you can choose the access for it. Now, because this kit has not fully processed, it's under the research selection. But once it's processed, then the option for the law enforcement will pop up. And what I originally selected that it was opted in, that will be accessible. Now, if you notice here, I actually can't change it. So I can either change it to no public access or research. Uh, that's just because this is not yet processed, as I've said. But if you go up once it's processed, you can click public, no law enforcement access if you want to opt out or public with law enforcement access if you want to opt in. And then once you click that, you just go over to change. And once you hit that, then it's going to change it. Thank you so much for checking out my video. If you enjoyed, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. You can also click right about here if you'd like to subscribe. It's completely free to do so. And be sure to click that bell so you get all the notifications. You can also follow me on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram at Genie Vlogger, or become a patron on Patreon. I'm the Genie Vlogger. I'll see you in my next video.